my second game comes from uh, the Hungarian Team Championship played in 2005. And playing white is a guy called Peter Gara. Playing black is Janos Erdos. And um, the game shapes up as normal, with white playing d4, black plays c6. White brings the knight out to f3, and black plays his bishop out to f5. This is our preferred system. And this time white plays a rather boring move, uh, bishop d3. Well, there's no way around it. If white wants to play like this, what can you do? However, black should not feel at all intimidated by such a move. And I'm going to show you two ways to play against it. In this particular game, black decided to avoid the exchange for the time being and play bishop g6. This is a perfectly reasonable approach. Um, black says, well, if you want to take on g6, I'll take with the h-pawn. And now you've let me bring my rook into the game uh, completely free of charge. Well, in this game, I think Gara played a much better move. He played bishop f4. But already, this position, I would say, is fairly level. A lot of players ask me, well, how do you judge a position like that? How can you say this position is fairly level? I mean, I can't see for the life of me what's going on here. How can you just judge it as level? Well, the way I judge it is to ask myself, is white placing any difficulties in black's way? Is white making it difficult for black to get the pieces out in any way? If he is, then I'm not at all sure that the position would be level. I would have thought... The guy who's making it difficult for the other guy to get his pieces out would have the better position somehow. It could be black or white. But the problem for white is that the black pieces can just come out very easily to good square. Admittedly, white can do this too. I mean, white played the comfortable move. Queen e2 in the game. Black played e6. White castle. Black played bishop e7. But black is not impeded in any way. So that to me says comfortable game equal position. You cast your eye around the position and you look for ways for white to get the advantage. Well, the fact is, white's options are limited in a position like this, simply because he cannot stop black's natural development plan, which is basically to castle, to get the knight out, and then to maybe move the queen out to the queen side, and to either pawn on d4. Um, this is a very easy plan to understand. And in this game, well, basically, White gets a bit frustrated that he's getting absolutely nowhere. I mean, just going back to the position after castles, um, you know, possibly in this position, Black can already start to think about messing White's queen side up by playing bishop b4. This seems to be to be a more aggressive way to, to handle the position. And if White goes uh, knight e5, well, of course, there's a big, fat, juicy pawn on d4 to consider. So probably White has got to play a move like rook ad1 before he... Uh, before he decides to play knight e5. And who knows? I mean, black can maybe consider some sort of very strange strike, like bishop takes c3 and queen a5. Of course, this is a risky way to handle the position. But a careless white player could easily uh, fall in for something like this. And, um, I don't know, bishop b4 is, is obviously an alternative to bishop e7, which in itself is, is of course, rock solid. Well, uh, rook fb1 was played. And now, really, I mean, I, I don't know, Black play bishop takes d3 in the game. That seems to me to be a slight loss of time. Um, okay, obviously black wanted to keep it very solid. Why not knight bd7? You know, that seems to me to be perfectly reasonable. I mean, I, I don't know. Is castling slightly inaccurate in this position because of knight e5? Well, I don't know. I, once again, is that pawn offering? I don't think white can be so frisky with the knight. Um... And of course, the other way after castle is to take on uh, g6 and then to go rook a d1, after which black, black plays knight b7, uh, knight e5 comes, and then some move like queen b6, followed by a rook to d8. This would be absolutely bog standard typical play here, and uh, again, seems very reasonable for black. So I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe black just wanted to get rid of that bishop. Bishop takes d3. But of course, the, the most striking thing about this is despite the fact black has wasted a tempo on this exchange at d3, his position is still completely rock solid. And um, I'm not sure what could be easier than to remember this setup. The twin horns on e6 and c6 restraining white's d-pawn. The easy development of the, the minor pieces. White played bishop g5. Black gave the bishop a prod and then brought his knight out to d7. 
I'm not at all sure what could be easier than just remembering this setup. And of course, for the average player, that's exactly what is needed. No effort required to get a good position. Rook AD1, we can't fault White. I mean, he's just playing the most natural moves on the board, really. Um, and it's just a question of whether he can breach Black's position. I suppose the next item on White's agenda is to improve the position of this, this poorly placed knight on C3. That knight's not doing anything, really. Uh, better get it into the game somehow. Anyway, Black continues with rock solid moves. Rook E8, H3, more a, a gesture that White really doesn't know what to do with his position. Queen to b6. Um, again, very good. White can play b3, but that doesn't really help him. Knight d2 was played. Rook a d8. Excellent. Go back. Queen takes uh, b2 in this position, of course, is, is um, rather risky because of rook b1. Queen a3, and then rook takes b7. I don't think... Uh, I don't think Black should go in for this continuation and allow the white rook to take up such an active position. Fortunately for Black, he just simply plays rook a d8. Knight c4 is played. <coughs> Queen a6. Bishop takes f6. Knight takes f6. Knight e5, accompanied by a draw offer, which was happily accepted by Black. Um, there's nothing in the position after Queen takes d3. White plays rook takes d3, and uh, this of course is completely level. Perhaps the simplest move for black is just to play knight d7, and uh, it's hard to see this game finishing in anything other than a draw. So the two players decided to shake hands right away. Now you can say, okay, that's a rather tedious struggle. I say, just remember to be modest with the black pieces. Do not, um, do not think you can just take an opponent apart with your bare hands with the black pieces you've got to equalise first and um, this system seems an excellent way to do it so that's one way against bishop d3 